This video is going to be a speculation based video. There will also be spoilers for the Fallout TV show and I'm saying major spoilers. So if you have not finished the Fallout TV show, I recommend going to finish that before you come back to watch this video. The question I want to talk about is did vault Tech drop the bombs in the Fallout universe? Now, we know that pre-war America, before the bombs falling, America was a nation just with so many issues, right? Resource wars, political turmoil. The vault Tech Corporation was a major defense contractor for the US government, right? They took over all of the nuclear defense contracts, right? The United States of America relied on one corporation to defend them. That is already an issue from the start. And that sparks a benefit to vault Tech for doing something like this. I mean, if it, if it comes down to money, then there's not really a benefit to, say, vault Tech dropping the bombs. But if it com comes down to people who have massive egos, to people with who want to control everything, that is where vault Tech would have control. And it even goes into, like, the Fallout show where, I mean, the last episode, Cooper was listening in on his wife, and Mr. House was asking, you know, how can you confirm that we can all benefit from the bombs dropping. And then uh, his wife said, you know what, we'll do it ourselves. That was like, okay, you know what, vault Tech dropping bombs. But does that confirm that they dropped all of them? Because they blew up all of America, right? There's been speculation as well that, say, they only dropped a few bombs. And then that caused mass turmoil between China and America because they were already on the teetering edges of war. I wouldn't be surprised if vault Tech dropped bombs in both China and America and both countries decided to just bomb the rest, right? Because in Fallout 4 as well, there is a quest with a Chinese submarine where that Chinese submarine bombed Boston, right? It wasn't just vault Tech. It was clearly China and vault Tech. There were just like two points of interest here. So vault Tech probably did drop some bombs or vault Tech never had the chance to and China did it first. But vault Tech was going to do it at some point. It is a great discussion because it comes back to vault Tech, you know, having those government contracts, the creating the network of bun bunkers, and it will protect the only population left. And in the Fallout show, again, they froze, funny enough, they froze all of their, you know, high-end executives at vault Tech, right, to become overseer of Vault 33 and 32, right, to take control of those other vaults. On October 23rd, 2077, the Great War happened. We got to see that firsthand in Fallout 4. Just sitting at home with your wife or husband, with little baby Sean, you know, having a nice old a cup of morning Joe, just really chilling. And then the vault Tech salesman representative comes in, you, just reverse, you reserve a spot just in fucking time, like within the hour, right? And then, you know, two hours later, devastation happens, right? The entire world is on fire. And... Vault Tech, you know, I mean, being the corporation that they are, could do it, right? They are a monopoly in the defense, you know, uh, sector. They have R&D development with all of these things. I guarantee they've been practicing, you know, I mean, like, you're going to need to, you know, research what kind of nuclear detonation can a vault door and vaults protect themselves from, right? I wouldn't be surprised if they had contracts where out in, like, third world countries, they tested this shit, right? Where they bombed their own vaults to see how well they could hold up. I would not be surprised. So clearly they'd have some sort of access to a nuclear arsenal as well. And another question I'm asking, did vault Tech drop the bombs, can be you know, easily answered. Yes, you know, Cooper's wife said, yes, we dropped the, we're, we're going to drop the bombs. But that doesn't mean that they actually did, right? China 100% dropped a bomb at least, right? The submarine in Boston in Fallout 4, they launched nukes at uh, the Commonwealth at Boston, right? They were hit by nukes because of that submarine. I mean, the guy in the submarine said, you know, I had to watch it, you know, like he was stuck in that sub, the sub was not operational, and who knows? I mean, it could have been vault Tech. it could have been both, right? Let's be honest here. I mean, there's some spec, uh, there could be speculation that vault Tech worked with China. I wouldn't be surprised by that at all, right? I would not be surprised. But all that matters is that in the end, either if it was vault Tech or either if it was China, the entire world was on fire. Everything. I doubt much of the world in the Fallout universe is left, especially 200 years later, because I'm betting even if like a bunch of other countries, say a lot of Europe were left behind, you know, like still going, I mean, I'm pretty sure they would have sent out something to go help people, right? Because in Fallout 4, Fallout 3, 200 years later, I mean, the capital, you know, the capital of the uh, United States is, is, you know, still a shit show, right? It's still on fire, basically. Mutants everywhere, raiders everywhere, slavers everywhere. It's still an issue. So most of the world in the Fallout universe is probably dead. It's probably 90% of the entire world is dead because of a nuclear 
devastation because of Voltec or because of China, because of the United States. And I mean, realistically here, we could even go in. The United States could have worked with Voltec to bomb themselves. Let's, I mean, like they got some really wacky shit going on. In the last episode of the Fault Show as well, they kind of hinted at how they worked with the research, right? How they worked with the vaults doing experiments, right? They were mentioning, you know, certain vaults, you know, what if we have two little resources and an overpopulation of people? I linked that in my head immediately to Vault 51 and Vault 76. I think it's from a different vault because Vault 51 was trying to find the perfect overseer. I don't think it was overpopulation issues. I, I think he, the robot was designated to find the perfect overseer, but they were mentioning like vault experiments. Most vaults as well were designated as, for experimental purposes, right? We did have a few vaults that were designated for control vaults, right? I mean, Vault 33 was a control vault, or so we say, you know, for the start of the show, right? I mean, Vault 76, for example, was a control vault, but there's been speculation around, you know, how they kind of handled that. I mean, throwing 250 people of the brightest people, you know, in your country into one vault, giving them access to a nuclear arsenal, arsenal, you know, and seeing if they can rebuild America. I mean, that could be an experiment, right? It could be simple of, you know, will they use the nukes? Is that an experiment, right? If they give access, if they have access to a nuclear arsenal, will they bomb the world again? And, you know, according to, yeah, yeah, we did. <laughs> we bombed the shit out of Appalachia. We fought, I mean, like, we've bombed it for no reason. We've bombed it for farming. Like, we, we've done a lot of stuff to, with the bombs, and the experiments themselves, they were conducted in the vaults, obviously, post-war, right? Ranged from testing the effects of isolation. They were testing effects of the sociological and psychological studies. And, you know, it could be used to gather data for post-war reconstruction. Now, some vaults, like, I mean, like, I know Vault 111. What's the point of freezing people? I mean, you're freezing people to release them later to see how they do, right? I mean, like, you have a soldier as Nate. You have a lawyer with Nora. There's a lot of different things. Or, you know, it's just like a another vault, you know, you have this little town, you know, this little kind of community, and you put a vault up there, I mean, like, that's pretty cool that they have that, there's so many vaults in this game, I mean, there's a vault in, uh, vault in Vegas, right, that's been overcome by, like, plants and wildlife, right, I mean, what kind of genetic shit was going on there, right, so many vaults in this game, right, Vault 51, for example, you know, putting an AI computer in charge of finding a suitable overseer, right? And letting Zax, you know, decide how a suitable overseer is going to be found. And he decided, you know what, we're going to do a fight to the death, right? The strongest will become overseer. And then, so they, Bethesda did their little battle royale, which I thought was cool. We know that the Enclave is also a post-war U.S. government kind of base, right? In Fallout 3, they have their president in the United States, right? A AI or a robot that is designated, you know what, he's taken over the Enclave, which I think is like, I mean, why would you let your, you know, United States government being controlled by a robot? I mean, like, I don't think that would be a good idea, but you can convince the president funny enough to blow himself up because, you know, he's just not good for the capital wasteland. I mean, there's so many different things that you know, like you can do with that situation, especially with the United States government, but using the United States government and the enclave, like it could be used as well. Another speculated fact that I'm just thinking of right now, using data from the vaults to help rebuild, right? The enclave was always going to be a post-war organization, like in Fallout 76, right? Even in Fallout 76, the White Spring was like this huge, you know, elitist club, right? You know, representatives from all over the United States, right? Like, rich people, governors, politicians, right? And the White Spring was supposed to be, you know, the post-war remnant, right? They had their own vault under White Springs. There is a vault under White Springs. It's the Enclave Vault. It's for them to, you know, the rich people, the powerful people, to, you know, come back after a little while and retake America as well, right? It's it's kind of like 76, but it's more government-oriented. It's more regulated. vault -Tec would also have a massive legacy when coming towards the Wasteland, right? Their influence is seen throughout the Wasteland. I mean, even normal people find these vaults, right? Learn about them. And using the technology from those vaults and the societal impacts of their experiments. I mean, there was the one vault in Fallout 4, I think 81 or 91. There were two vaults in Fallout 4 I'm thinking of. One vault that had a mole rat testing facility. I think it was Vault 81 in Fallout 4, the one where all the people are still alive, all the vault dwellers are still alive. They had a mole rat testing facility, and they were trying to find a cure, or they were trying to build up diseases. I completely forgot what the experiment was, but they were testing on mole rats. You can find Curie in that vault from Fallout 4. That is an experiment, right? They're testing pathogens. They're testing for, you know, cures, diseases, and, um, you know, things that can probably potentially heal or wipe out people in the Commonwealth in Boston. I mean, that was one, and then I think, I think, I forget the name of the vault, 95 in vault, uh, Fallout 4, where they took a bunch of uh, addicted people and uh, tried to heal them, 
right? And then I think there were still drugs in that vault. So they were like testing withdrawals and then they think they give them drugs again. I mean, I wouldn't think that's the smartest idea, especially if, you know, people with addictions, if they have near access to drugs and they need to hurt people to get it, I bet, you know, they'll hurt those people to get it. I'd have no doubt about that. I mean, that was just messed up for Vault Tech to actually do that. Finally, I want to talk about what benefits vault -Tec could have for, you know, dropping the bombs, for dropping the nukes, or causing China and the United States to have a full-on nuclear war. So obviously, the first point that will be made is profit. By creating the demand, and by creating that scarce that, look, the bombs will come. The bombs could come at some point. The bombs will drop we will die. I mean, people are going to start buying spaces left and right. Let's be completely honest here. People will buy spaces if they have threat of nuclear disaster, and that is exactly what people did, right? They, they were threatened by the feeling of a of the bombs dropping, and they bought spaces. vault Tech made billions of dollars. Billions of dollars. And it leads into control as well. With vault Tech having all that money and having that control, especially in pre-war times, even in post-war, even, you know, currently as the bombs are dropping, as someone's living in a vault, they have control over your life. That's just, that's just how that works. You can't, you know, take, unless you're overseer, like overseer is in charge of the vault. They are responsible for anything that goes down in that vault. But vault -Tec itself, they report to vault -Tec. So say, for example, you know, Vault 32, Vault 31, Vault 33. Vault 33 overseers report to Vault 31. They report to someone, and if they get compromised, then a new person moves in, which I thought was absolutely crazy. Look, Vault Tech wants control. They don't need money at that point. I understand completely. Now, there's also that disincentive because then there goes your currency. I mean, what's the currency then? Bottle caps? Like, paper and cash doesn't matter anymore. Your billions of dollars, your trillions of dollar corporation won't matter once the nukes drop. Unless you can somehow turn into bottle caps, your money monetary system is screwed. So that's one way that they could, you know, not actually need to bomb everyone because then all their money is gone but they still do have control and they still do have you know like just just control over your life really especially if you live in those vaults they can run whatever experiment they want on you they can control you however they see fit and there lies the experimentation part of that grand social experiment post-war scenario you know allowing vault Tech to carry out experiments and collect data the only issue is what experiments are they able to conduct and what is the data for I mean, is it for rebuilding America? Like, with all this information, are they able to rebuild America? It's shown that all of the over, like, all, a lot of the vault Tech executives, like the big top guys, are at Vault 31. They're still frozen, right? They're still on hibernation, waiting to be released to be the next overseer of Vault 33. I don't know what that is if they're trying to maintain, you know, the just area of whatever but like there it's a complete experiment on how that works and at the very end as well what i thought was really cool is hank mclean shows up to new vegas right i mean at the very end final scene credit scene he shows up to new vegas i mean if it's canon that mr house lives we know that they've had interaction before i don't know how mr house was able to run vaults because he was in that meeting when they were talking about you know handing out vaults look we have like over 100 something vaults there's four of you big mountain robco like all of these big corporations west tech we're going to give you guys vaults and you're going to run it how you see fit and whichever vault runs the longest or whichever one comes up with the most like you know like data in the end, it was basically, may the best man win. May the best corporation win. Let's see whose experiments can run the longest. And in the aftermath as well, power will come. Because you will have that resources and technology. Say if super soldiers, for example. I'm pretty sure it was West Tech, you know. Like, who wanted to, like, hey, can we make super soldiers, right? Is that ability? Can we do that in the vaults? And then, you know, you release them into the wasteland. Boom. You are rebuilding society with super soldiers. You can take out any any mutants that are out there, any enemies that are out there, any raiders, with ease, but Westek fucked their serums and made super mutants, and then, you know, a plenty, and I mean, there's countless other situations in the in the Fallout universe where it's been recreated as well, the Institute tried to create super soldiers with super mutants before they did since, uh, Westek and Appalachia tried, you know, to do the mutant program, and that's where super mutants broke out of, they broke out of West Tech, and even in the Brotherhood of Steel, Steel Rain, uh, DLC, they, this one fuck, the one scientist, he tried it again, he tried to make super soldier serums, and turned himself into a behemoth, and, like, there's just no end to that kind of experiment with super soldiers, and that comes into the power aspect, vault Tech and West Tech, you know, but with West Tech taking certain vaults, they were able to try that, right? They want to make super soldiers. And even for Robco, I mean, what was the point? I don't know what Mr. House had planned for 
the vaults themselves, I mean, like, the vaults around New Vegas were run, you know, with, like, experiments uh, for food or for medicine or for whatever, for, like, hospitals, however it was run, but it was run for experimenting, that was the main issue, it, or control vaults, they were run for, you know, just let's see what happens, right? Let's see, you know, let the, may the best man win. Let's see who can take control of the wasteland. And everyone is clearly alive at the end of the show, too. I mean, all those people most likely frozen in that one vault, right? They set up experiments. They're going to wake up later. Now, for Mr. House's sake, I mean, we don't know if he's dead or not. In the Fallout show, I'm going to bet in season two he's alive because... In season one of the brother of the of the show, it, the giant airship was codenamed something else before the show came out, but it is in fact the Pridwin. And this show takes place a few years after Fallout 4, so it is shown that look, the Brotherhood comes out of the Commonwealth alive, right? They leave the Commonwealth alive. That does not mean that they won in the Commonwealth. That means that they leave alive. So that means the Minutemen could have won, or that means the Brotherhood could have won. So we kind of have a canon ending. We have two plausible canon endings according to Bethesda. Either the Brotherhood of Steel won the Commonwealth, destroying the Institute and the Railroad, or the Minutemen won keeping everyone alive and just destroying the brotherhood of or just destroying the institute and finally i touched on it a bit earlier but it's vault Tech's legacy it is vault Tech's ability to have their name forever you don't need money in the situation of the post-war apocalypse when you have a legacy you everyone knows your name everyone in the wasteland knows what vault Tech is if you asked a random settler in the wasteland in any wasteland they probably know what vault Tech is they most likely know what a vault is like again yeah, those were you know vaults for people you know pre-bombing you know for people who were able to hide out right during the bombs or post bombs or you know pre bombs even like if you knew it was coming like people in the wasteland know what they are and those actions that vault tech took ensured that their name and influence would endure through history even if it's infamous right or if you know people respect them or if people hate them most likely now i mean in all the games that i've seen people really don't like vault tech and in the show as well cooper he hates vault tech we know why because you know they took his family but like, they hate vault -Tec. Like, vault is a very infamous corporation, and it's just crazy to see, you know, like, this company that was supposed to help people. Like, you look at it from a civilian point of view, only good. vault is building underground structures to save America. But then you get really into it, they're doing experiments. It's all for money. It's all for greed. Obviously, they're a multi-million, oh, multi-trillion probably dollar corporation in the Fallout universe. They're after resources. They're after power. They're after influence. And they get it all because the U.S. government, funny enough, with their with the corruption, even this could be blamed on the U.S. government and fallout as well. They relied on Voltec for all of their defense parameters, for everything that Voltec did. And I mean, Mr. House, for example, even like let's go back to Mr. House here. He knew that the bombs were coming at some point, right? He projected, yes, the bombs will come at some point. He installed his city. New Vegas, with anti-nuke defenses, missiles that could blow them out of the sky before they even hit the ground, and they hit the majority of them. He knew that that was coming. I don't know if that leads into the game as well, because he had already had that meeting with vault -Tec, so at that point, he was like, yes, they will most likely bomb us at this time, or China will bomb us near this time. I don't know, because that's a complete lore implication that needs to be discussed. If Mr. House decided to set up those nuclear launchers to shoot down the nuclear arsenal before it hit the ground because of his meeting with vault -Tec, or because he analyzed the data and was like, okay, you know what? Look, China has the complete possibility, or the world has a complete possibility, to be set on fire in the next few years. So, I'm going to set up defenses to protect my glorious city. After having the solid 20-minute discussion, it all comes back down to this. Did vault -Tec drop the bombs? In my opinion, I think they dropped some of them. I think vault set off certain areas in capital cities, Los Angeles, for example, Washington. I think they didn't drop bombs, I think they planted bombs. I mean, even in the show, I get it, like, I've seen speculation too, like, I didn't see nukes dropping when the bombs were going off. Granted, they are very fast and very compact, but I wouldn't be surprised, say, for example, if, you know, vault planted those bombs and then just detonated them in certain areas around the, around the globe, right? the United States military hears this news. Look, we're getting fucking bombed left and right. All our capital cities are going up in smoke. Most likely China, we got to fire back. They start launching nukes. China sees that. They start launching nukes back. And within a day, the in both countries and the majority of North America and the majority of Asia is on fucking fire because vault launched off a few bombs and they know exactly what they're doing because once the second that they launched those fierce nukes they most likely i wouldn't be surprised if they bombed a few in china as well right just get them both to shoot at the same time 
but that, you know, like, because why would the United States, you know, they get bombed, and then, I mean, China could try to say something in that time, like, no, that wasn't us, that wasn't us, I mean, I don't think the United States in this situation would believe them, but vault was smart about this, right? Drop a few bombs, let China do the rest. Or, vault didn't have the ability to do that, right? China did it first. I believe that vault dropped a few, and then they just let the United States, you know, North America and Asia go on an all-out war. I think that's what happened personally. I wouldn't be surprised if it was something else, say if China just dropped a bomb, right? Because we do know that China dropped some bombs, exactly how the submarine landed in Fallout 4. I wouldn't be surprised, for example, if, say, bombs were dropped, you know, New York, Los Angeles, right? In Fallout 4, bombs are dropped. Then, at that point, Chinese submarines are deployed. They're already deployed, they're moving in. Within that same hour, where Nate, Nora, and Sean are running to that vault, more bombs get dropped. I would not be surprised if Chinese submarines were already on their way by the time that news hit. I would not be surprised. Or those bombs, which was just China in general, right? They were already there. They were like sneaky submarines. They were just chilling in the water. Or, I mean, it's Fallout, right? I'm super futuristic as well. I know it's in the 50s base, but I wouldn't be surprised if submarines were super fast if they were just able to get over there like within a few hours and just bomb Boston as well right? I mean, because of this news, because China is also getting bombed. So this has been a very long lore discussion video I wanted to make, actually. for the. I mean, I just, I thought of this a day ago, and I'm like, I have to make this video. I really love the lore implications of Fallout. I really love the way that Bethesda, Obsidian, Interplay always went into this, always went into these discussions. All of the writing really comes just collectively together, and I really respect it for Bethesda as well to continue this look this lore incentive, like, look, did vault actually drop these bombs? Did vault do it? Did China do it? It's still a discussion because we don't know if vault did it. We don't. vault says they did, or they says they were, they were going to, but we don't know. China could have done it beforehand. It could have been the United States. Fuck, could have been Canada. Why not? Canada could have been tired of being in, uh, annexed, and they were like, we're going to build a few bombs, we're going to drop a few, and they don't want to let you guys fucking duke it out. I mean, Canada might as well have been bombed as well because they got annexed by the United States. But still, like, things like that. It could have been anybody. It could have been just some random fucking guy dropping a bomb and then that, that one bomb, one bomb in the United States, and that just caused a chain reaction. All it needed was one terrorist, like, just anything to do with one terrorist, really, to drop one bomb, to cause one nuclear explosion, and the rest of the world is set on fire. Just because they're psychologically, they have a, psych a psychological disorder or because they just, you know, there's just something wrong with them, right? Someone could have bombed the entire world or caused that because they had a disorder, because they had mental health issues. It could have been that, right? It could have been something who's just, someone who's just evil and just wanted to do something bad, wanted to kill billions upon billions of people. It didn't even need to be the corporations or China or the United States. It could have just been a terrorist organization from a third party. But I'm going to end it here. I want to thank you all for watching this video. Thank you for listening to me ramble for about 20 minutes. I mean, I hope that you've enjoyed this discussion I've been having. Uh, I love discussions like this. Let me know in the comments below if you think vault dropped the bombs. If you think China dropped the bombs. If you think the United States dropped the bombs. Who dropped first? That is an amazing question. I'd love to hear it as well because it's such a good lore implication. Look, who actually dropped the bombs first in this scenario, right? Was it China? Was it the United States? Was it vault -Tec? Let me know down in the comments below. If you did enjoy this video, consider leaving a like, sharing, commenting, and subscribing if you also choose to. And becoming a member as well. Click the link down in the description below. It's only $2. If you choose not to, it's completely okay. Just leave a like on the video if you did enjoy. And I will see you all in the next video. I also want to leave a massive thank you to my channel members. Thank you. You guys are supporting me so much. Probably just like so much, honestly. The support has been insane in general across the channel. We just passed 850 subscribers as of me recording this video. It could have gone up or down. But I just want to thank you all so much to the channel members, to people like you who subscribe. If you are watching me ramble on while I'm thanking my channel members, thank you all so much. And I will see you all in the next video.